Welcome everyone. Welcome to Conversations for Peace. And this is the International Day of Peace. And we are celebrating today. My friend and I, Lisa Couturier, we are here having so much fun. Yes. We've been celebrating the whole day, conversation after conversation <laughs> about <laughs> peace. And we have so much to share with you. So we wanted to go live and make certain that you got every single bit of it. So as a little bit of a recap, for the last 21 days that we've been together, we've been talking about what peace is, how to cultivate it, picking up tips and tools from so many people about how they bring peace into their lives and of course then share it with others. And so today I have to begin this conversation with Lisa and ask you, Lisa, what is peace to you? So peace used to be something that I was trying to reach or a place that I would go and what I discovered was it was inside of me all along. So it seems like a huge discovery. <laughs> how, how did you come about <laughs> discovering this? It, it was a huge discovery because I was so conflicted mm -hmm. with the definitions that I had of peace. And the first thing that came to mind for me was world peace. It was so large. Yeah. How do I, as one person, do world peace, right? How do I create world peace? And by chunking that down and discovering that it was inside of me, I realized that when I'm at peace and when I have peace in the areas of my life, that energy, that positive energy flows out to other people. And then those people start to have peace and happiness and joy. And it continues to flow out to them, creating this ripple effect. Hmm. And if everyone continues to do that, then world peace starts to develop. And so world peace, while it's still large, it allows me as one person and my discovery within to create. So you bring up a couple of really great points. Number one, I think you're not alone in, so often when we think of something like peace, it can be too huge, right? Mm -hmm. And we think that um, it's so far removed from us that we'll never succeed. And also, I think we do think of peace sometimes as this whole world peace. And I have this image of like Atlas with the world <laughs> on his shoulders, right. right? When the truth is, is that peace begins within each and every one of us. And it is a ripple effect. And what came to my mind also as you were speaking was my mother used to say, um, kill them with kindness, right? <laughs> and I, I kind of heard this thing like, you know, just let peace get them with peace, right? It's that whole domino effect. Right. And what um, a relief that is to take that weight off of my shoulders, thinking about peace, not as this whole great big huge chunk, but like you said, chunk it down, you know, little bite-sized pieces. Exactly. But what I also like about what you said is that it seems to me that... <clears throat> For you, and I know it has been for me, and I imagine many people who we're speaking to today, that it's been a journey. So can you talk about your journey to find this peace within you? <laughs> um, so my life was sort of a shit show. Okay. And I think we know what that looks like. <laughs> <laughs> and I, the chaos that, again, I was creating within myself and it, taking it outward, I knew I needed to change. Mm. How to change? What was I gonna do? So I took the balance wheel. What is that? It's a wheel that um, I was given an, an NLP course, a neuro linguistics course mm -hmm. that I took. And then I realized that Thomas Leonard had used that same um, balance wheel and created it into categories okay. of life for okay. each hum like human beings, if you will. And I started looking at each of those categories to see where peace or where I thought peace was. So basically where things were working for me. And then where things weren't. 
And health and spirituality were my two big areas that I wanted to focus on. Hmm. My health, I was already, I had a team of doctors, holistic practitioners, and just my mindset that was there for my health. But to have all of that work, I needed to have trust and I needed to believe. But I was conflicted oh. because in that spirituality realm, I thought I had to have one or the other, the other being religious. And how could I have both? And I realized that I could have both. It wasn't an either or situation, which had basically been my life. It was either this or that. Um, and when I discovered that I could have both of the religious beliefs, some of the, some of them, not all of them, um, and have the spirituality that I so embraced with all the different modalities, I had a sense of peace. And so I was able to believe and trust in not only the Western doctors, but the Eastern medicine that I like to practice and believe in so strongly. And my health started to improve. My spirituality got better. Every area of my life started to get better, which again, the chaos started to diminish, which brought me that internal peace. Mm. I think you bring up some really important points. Number one, kudos to you to give yourself permission to keep the things that were precious to you. You know, just because you were wanting to focus and build more spirituality in your life, you know, there sometimes is the the weight um, of the whole new age mm -hmm. era that maybe is a bit intimidating. And this belief system that, oh, you have to get rid of everything of the old, when if it's something that nourishes you and nurtures your heart and you feel connected to, why would you give that up? And of course they can coexist. And so really my hat's off to you for giving yourself permission to have both of those worlds come together and for you to find the harmony in them so that you put yourself as the priority, not the expectations, not the box that maybe you thought it should go into. And bingo, you find <laughs> peace. There we go. Amazing. Wasn't that easy. <laughs> I'm sure not, but on the other hand, it is that easy, isn't it? It is because it's it's our perspective, mm -hmm. and we all have the power within us to choose what we want to believe and how we want to see things. Yeah, and I'll give you an example. You know, when I started doing the self discovery and the self development, and and looking at spirituality just as one of the categories. I was like, oh God, I've got to peel away the layers. What am I going to find? Which gives it a negative connotation. Hey, right? it's scary business. But then I said, but what if I discover something or uncover something like a treasure hunt and how exciting that can be? And what I did discover, the power within me, the peace that was in me, and also if I'm just my authentic self. Wow. That that chaos is not there. You know, the, the front that you put on or that I was putting on, that everything was so perfect. The friction that that caused, which made me sick. Mm -hmm. When I let go of all of that and became just me, my authentic self, my loud, vibrant, <laughs> authentic self, I still had peace. So again, I didn't have to give up something for something else. It was just combining those two. And it's it's like with each of us, you know, one, we can do a lot, but together we can do so much more. Sure, absolutely. So I'm, I'm, I'm really, um, first off, taken by um, that simple reframing, right? peeling back the layers, <laughs> like, it's too scary, and all of that, and just seeing it through different eyes, allowing yourself to see it as 
discovering all of the wonderful treasures within you, of you, and pursuing that journey, really staying committed to it and, and allowing yourself to, again, let go of whatever wasn't serving mm -hmm. you, but keeping what was serving you mm. and not judging yourself because of that and allowing yourself to really journey as the authentic you. Mm -hmm. That's huge, Lisa. It really is. And I know that there are many challenges there, many, you know, potential pits that we can fall into because we all have so many expectations of ourselves based on what others have determined, <laughs> you know, who we should be <clears throat> and um, what we should sound like. And for you especially, right? You're naturally this very vibrant personality. And so for you to believe, had you chosen that you have to be this quiet little mouse, <laughs> right? <laughs> In order to be loved and recognized and accepted, of course you're going to be at war within yourself. Right. Which there's no peace and there's no <laughs> ripple when that happens. So now you've found out yeah. that you can be the vibrant you wearing your fuchsia nail polish <laughs> and, you know, just being all the beautiful, magnificent colors of the world that you are. And that you can still be peaceful. Yes. So peace isn't neutral. No. No, it's not at all. And again, we as a collaborative can create peace when we start with ourselves. Mm. So it's really then, from what I'm gathering, from what you're saying, it's about identifying where we're kind of at war within ourselves. Yeah. Where that conflict is. And taking the journey to explore, well, what can I take as true for me? And what can I let go of? And what else can I bring in? So in terms of bringing in, what did you do to bring more peace into your world? I started accepting me. Mm. And then other people started accepting me. And those that didn't, Again, I thought I had to get rid of people, which that sounds awful, but mm -hmm. I'm human. Sorry. Yeah. And I don't have to get rid of them. They'll either drop away mm -hmm. or they will start to mirror what I'm doing. Um, I had to believe in myself. Yeah. I had to trust. And I had a problem with trust. And I realized that it wasn't that I couldn't trust anybody else. It's that I didn't trust me. And when I started trusting me, <laughs> when I started trusting myself, I was trusting other people. Oh. And again, it, the friction of life when you're not trusting people and you don't believe in things and you're not accepting, that friction causes the chaos, which reduces the the peacefulness within of us. Of course. It's, <clears throat> that's when it becomes unachievable. Right. Ah, so trust in peace. A marriage made in heaven. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> or on earth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Out of> space. <laughs> Amazing trusting. <clears throat> well, I think that that's um, such a vital aspect of this, learning how to trust ourselves. And would you say that that is something that comes from outside of you or inside of you? I think it comes, it comes from inside. Mm -hmm. But it's also surrounding yourself with the people that'll, that gives you that permission yeah. to do so. Not that you need permission, but the, the acceptance. Mm. The energy has a place to go, exactly. to land. And it's the, the equal value, you yeah. know, that equal exchange. Yeah. When you are when you accept yourself, other people accept you. Yeah. I love that whole part of the journey that you're talking about, about learning how to trust yourself and how essential that is. 
because you're right if you're not trusting yourself you're not going to trust the world around you and you absolutely <clears throat> cannot connect with the peace that's within you because it'll be constant chaos right awesome lesson for the day and a wonderful reason for us to continue celebrating this beautiful peace yes. that is always within us and um, that we can nourish and nurture and cultivate every day. So, any parting words for our audience today about peace? I invite you to discover all of your goodness and your badassness within yourself <laughs> and enjoy every minute and celebrate all of what you discover. So right there, <clears throat> we have like blown it out, right? Badass and peace, both in the same sentence <laughs> and the same heart, right? Yes. They're, they're both a part of it. So thank you so much, Lisa. How can everybody find you? You can find me at r2rlife.com. I'm on Facebook as Lisa K. Couturier, C-O-U-T-U-R-I-E-R, -E and on Instagram as Lisa Couturier. How fantastic. Thank you, really. Just wonderful. Um, and so for all of you also who haven't yet received your uh, seven ways to cultivate peace or your copy of the Peace Pledge, I'm inviting you to make certain that you come to heartshiftcoach.com so that you can find it all there. And then join me as I am continuing to take this Peace Pledge every single day because Peace is not something that we just snap our fingers and um, turn on and off. It is something that requires that we are constantly reconnecting to. And that, of course, is what brings us to a place of co-creating with all of the other hearts that are aligned with ours around the world and making that um, world peace possible, right, Lisa? Yes. All right, so here's my pledge. I pledge to extend peace into my entire circle of influence through cultivating my own peaceful heart, my clear intentions, and of course, taking personal responsibility for my thoughts, my beliefs, the choices that I am making the actions that I am taking and looking at my experiences, observing them and asking myself questions about whether or not I need to tweak that a little bit and make it a better experience for all. And so I am here with this pledge, this pledge to take compassionate action, to really look through the eyes of peace every single day and I take this peace pledge and I pass it from my peaceful heart into yours into yours Thank you. and we are sharing this peace in this moment and so until tomorrow I am leaving you with so much peace and love and celebration and hope that you will spend the rest of your day and evening having these very same conversations over and over and over again, just the way Lisa and I have, and really coming to define peace for yourselves and know where to find it and how to find it and how to sure it up when you need to. And so until tomorrow, peace in, peace out. Have a wonderful, wonderful night. Bye-bye.